All right, today I'm really excited to be with Tad Hargrave, and he is going to be doing something really cool, which is coaching some of my clients through how to describe their niche uh, more clearly, more effectively. I think this is something that everybody watching this can benefit from because all of us, um, a lot of us, have trouble introducing ourselves or getting really clear about okay, what kind of people do we serve and what do we do for them. Um, Tad, if you don't know who he is, has been coaching people on this for more than 10 years. Uh, you know, lots and lots of people. I mean, he has, he has run courses on this stuff. He has coached lots of people personally. He has done challenges that have reached hundreds of people. Anyway, he's, he's really, really good at this stuff. So I hope that by watching him coach some of my clients through this, you'll really benefit and see how you can do it yourself. And also, uh, we're doing this in celebration of um, the launch of his niching course. So I'll say a little bit about his niching course now, and then we'll also talk about it at the end. Um, so his niching course is basically the A to Z of how do you figure out um, what, it, what the heck you're doing in the world for your work? I mean, uh, how, how, do you how do you know, how do you describe what it is that you do? How do you pick the right niche? Um, all that stuff. So if you're like really unclear, like, hmm, should I, should I go in this direction or that direction of my business? I would recommend that you at least look at Tad's niching spiral course. And if you buy the course through me, what happens is I'm going to give you um, $150 of course value from me, meaning you can get $150 of my course, any course that you haven't yet bought from me, you can get that in, in value. So it's a, it's a good deal. For those of you who are my clients already, you can get that in cash back. So um, uh, anyway, so I'm really excited for, for Tad to show you what he does. He does it masterfully, and I think you'll enjoy this. So without further ado, Tad Hargrave, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, so yeah, for those who are here, good to be here with you. For those watching later, yeah, you know, it's niching is a very difficult thing. This is something I've seen in this industry is, of course, the first week of most of these six-week courses is figure out your niche, and which is fine and it makes sense, but of course it's not enough. And so for some people this works and some people are really left in the dust and everything seems to hinge on this getting this right and particularly for service providers very specifically it's this question of who are you trying to reach that's the the kind of red hot white hot center of uh, of this whole niche business or the, the part that needs to be tended to and until that's there very difficult to figure anything out this is something i learned over the years is until one has this this sense of who we're trying to reach figured out well, what are the hubs? Where do you find them? Well, find who? How do you come up with a really compelling offer for them? Well, who is it? it, it different offers for different people. How are you going to get good word of mouth when word of mouth is based on getting good results? But how do you get good results with everybody? You see, Adam, so everything comes back to this uh, at the end of the day. And so I didn't, you know, walk into this, the marketing business knowing this, but it just, and it, it wasn't honestly primarily from learning from other people. It was through seeing people in my workshop struggle and seeing this is what was at the heart of it. Uh, so I could talk theory all day about niching. I mean, literally I could for days and days, but it's probably easier and more helpful to have the theory appear in some practical examples. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dive into these specific target market examples, these little mini case studies, and hopefully we can have some of this there is a much larger richer worldview you know there's this 90 day home study program i have uh and it's 90 days because there's just that much to say so of course not all of that appear but maybe we can plant some seeds of uh you know wonder and insight and curiosity about this and uh get some yeah. some good progress on these target markets to boot awesome, okay man. awesome so tad um would you like me to share my screen and we could look at the actual statements that my clients sure. have submitted. Uh, they're all here live on our Zoom calls. So I don't know if you want to have some back and forth with them as well. I might, yeah. Okay, Let's, okay cool. We'll find out as we go. Okay, cool. So I'll, let me share my screen and then you can get going with that. Sure. Okay. So here's our first one from Anne-Marie Pizarro. So Anne, thanks for joining us. 
uh, I'll unmute you if that's okay. And then, uh, um, you know, and then, uh, uh, hi, Anne. Hello, George. Hi, Chad. Hey, hey, Anne. Good to see you. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yes. So, so, um, so, Tad, do, do you want to just go ahead and kind of read it and then and any notes you want? Yeah, we'll just, I'll let yeah. you take it away. Okay, and so you wrote, you said, uh, I help, I'm trying to, can't see the whole thing there. Uh, there we go, thank you. I help holistic practitioners, entrepreneurs, and creative agents receive answers and tools for their life's most pressing questions through the Akashic Records and the human energy field. Okay. So this is an interesting one to give feedback on. Here's what works about it really well is holistic practitioners and entrepreneurs. That's fairly clear. Holistic practitioners, I'd say is the most clear. Entrepreneurs is pretty broad. I mean, this could mean literally every kind of person who started a business ever. Uh, and so that's a bit, that it loses me more. I know a bit more. I know they're not working for government. I know they're not working in a nonprofit. I know they started a business. They're not, you know, unemployed. Um, but I, um, I don't know much more. Yeah. Uh, and then the creative agents. So creative agents, I would say is what I, I would call an umbrella phrase. This is a probably jargon. It's a bit of industry speak. It's, it's a term that is, I would use for what's called the, uh, the big circle kind of umbrella phrase, if you, if you will, that's helpful for us internally, but not that useful in marketing. So for example, I might say hippie entrepreneurs, was well, great for me, but it's it's of limited use, frankly, in the market. Our heart-based businesses, good for me, but it, it, when we get into the practical nuts and bolts of marketing, it's not that helpful. Um, but something like holistic practitioners, that's much more specific as an iteration. So when you say, yeah, when you say creative agents, you know, if I were to ask everyone in this call to type out, when you hear creative agents, what comes to mind? I promise you, everyone would have something different. So we're leaving a lot to chance there, and that's not that useful to do in marketing. You know, I, I had a, a version of this in one of the uh, similar sessions actually I did to this, and it was not creative agents, just creatives. I worked with creatives, and I asked everyone to type out what they saw, and it was everything from graphic designers to sculptors to people who live a bohemian lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? It was just, there was really no consensus. And the most important thing we can do, okay, there's three things in marketing that need to be established in this order. Relevance, credibility, and value, yeah? Relevance, credibility, value. And all we're talking about in this statement is relevance. That's the only thing we need to achieve. The other two come later. And when I say relevance, I mean, people need to look at what we've written and say, that's me, not that's nice. Yeah, because <laughs> people say that's nice is not helpful. Those people won't buy. We need somebody who looks and says, oh my God, that's me. So if you were to say this at a party, somebody hears it and says, oh my God, that's me. That's, well, that's confronting. Did my, did my mother send you, you know? Uh, we want this kind of a strong reaction and, and people connect with it. Okay, so the first part, uh, I think I've said enough. So receive answers and tools for their life's most pressing questions. I would think something very helpful here can be to give three examples. You know, receive answers and tools to life's most, pre their life's most pressing questions, such as, bah, 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 bah. you know, give the big three. And particularly, because the truth is there may be some that you're just more excited to work with than others. There's some questions that's like, I love it when people ask me about this and not so much when they ask me about this. And I, and I wonder, and do you have any, do, you ha do any come to mind quickly, like, or something you've seen clients ask you again and again? Well, I, I was just wondering when you say life's most pressing questions around health, wealth, and relationships. Right. Those are the big three that always get named. That's right. fine. That, that does help a bit. Um, I would just say there is the opportunity to further refine here. You don't have to, but that's one way you could go. You could pick one of those three categories, um, or you could pick even a subset of those categories. It's possible. Uh, not, that, not that one has to, but that is certainly an option. It's just, I would say, receiving answers and tools to life's most pressing questions. There's no niche there. In terms of, there's no red hot center. Right, right. You know, there's no, um, and you know, here's, here's one of the best ways I think we can talk about target markets is what's the situation? What's the story? One of my favorite um, questions I got about figuring out one's niche is from Jeffrey Van Dyke, and he said, is the question is, what's the perfect moment for you to show up? 
Meaning, there's a moment it's too soon, or there's a moment it's too late. So what's the sweet spot? Another way to wonder about this is what's the breaking point? I mean, because people, sure, people have lots of questions in their life they wander around with, and they're perfectly happy to never get the answer. Oh, well. So they don't have answers to these questions. So what? What is it about them that makes it pressing is part of what I, I wonder. But that's the key right there, is that it could be any time, but, but the work we do is when we are doing the work, they're really bringing the most important, the most pressing, the most timely. And yeah. so it's kind of so kind what, condensing it into a very direct statement, even though it feels so general. Yes. So what I would say is, I mean, it's just interesting. If I were to get it, well, there's a lot to say. The, I think there's more that can be massaged here around, I mean, great, so they have a pressing question, but so what? You know, the, what is it about this moment? There's something that them not having the answer to this question is having consequences in their life. And that's what I'm wondering. So what? What are the consequences? What, what is happening or not happening, not able to happen in their life because they don't know. So there's something about that moment of, you know, so if you were to ask me at a party, let's say I'm you and you ask me what I do, I said, well, um, I, uh, you know how people, they hit moments in their life where there's something big they can't figure out. And yeah, maybe it's a health question or direction to go career wise or you know should I stay or should I go in relationship and it's just so they don't know and kind of everything on their life is on hold until they can figure this thing out I help them figure it out you know I help them get clear so they can make a decision of what to do moving forward so they're no longer trapped or stuck uh, one other additional wrinkle, and this may be useful for everyone, is that you can sometimes give a metaphor for it. To me, there'd be this question is, metaphorically, what is this like? Is this like they're um, trapped in a room they just can't get out of until they answer this question? Or they're carrying around a heavy weight of this question? Or they, uh, yeah, you know, what? To, to, if you can come up with a metaphor, sometimes somebody will say, oh my God, I know that exact thing. Okay, and then there's this part through the Akashic Records and Human Energy Field. So the, this could be, this is one of these things where this could be the greatest strength of this phrase or the greatest weakness, and it really depends who. Because what is implied in this is these people already know what the Akashic Records are and they already know what the human energy field is. So if that's what you're going for, you've nailed it. That's exactly if you want, what I'm going for. Okay, great. So then, it, it, perfect. And I would just say the you know, in terms of, okay, even within that, it's fairly okay so we're re, we're looking for people who are stuck with some big question in their life they get what the akashi records and human energy field is they totally buy into that they yes that's i'm a fan and um yeah they're looking for help so i guess then that's that's fairly clear and mm, it's interesting. My guess is there could be, you know, if you're going to do Facebook ads, this is another way you can think about the, the target markets is one could do a Facebook ad for health. One could do a, a Facebook ad for the, the money one. One could do a Facebook ad for the like, Hey, are you struggling with these kinds of questions around your relationship? You know, you could hone it down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and you might get more traction. It might be easier to find hubs, you know, for those types of things. Cause right now, this is basically self-employed people who are into these things who are stuck in some area, it's, which is not so bad. You know, that's actually, it's fairly clear. And uh, the hubs don't immediately leap to mind aside from kind of conscious networking entrepreneurship groups. Mm -hmm. um, the... Can I just say, um, Chad, that for me, the heart of this statement is answers and tools. Because that's yeah. what I provide, really, is answers and tools. It doesn't matter what the question is. I know focusing on those big three helps to direct, but even getting to the clarity of answers and tools, and that's yeah. even the tagline. 
I got but it. I'm still in my business. Here's so, the challenge. Here's the challenge with it. Yeah. Um, so your ideal client is on Island A. They have some symptoms, some troubles they don't want. They want to be on Island B, where there's some result that they're craving. Your business, your offer, uh, these readings. This is the boat that could get them from one island to the other. Yeah. They. Um, this is a big, this is an immense question to ask oneself in niching. Am I selling the boat or am I selling the journey? Because if you're saying, hey, look, I do the Akashic Records and human energy field readings, that's my thing. I mean, th this is legitimate. People say, hey, I teach nonviolent communication classes and people go because it's Marshall Rosenberg stuff. That's why they're going. It's for that modality. So in that case, you're selling the boat. Mm -hmm. The other way to do it and these are not mutually exclusive, is to sell the journey. And so I would say right now, you're selling the boat primarily because answers and tools is the same as results. You know, so this is saying, hey, is your life not great? I'll help it be better. Are you feeling stuck? I'll help you get unstuck. You see what I'm saying? This is, very, this is not as specific as let's say, hey, are you a salesperson that is terrified of cold calling? I'll help you get what you see. So this is what you're offering in terms of the journey is very broad. Now the boat is very, there's a couple of very specific boats and it might be that there's enough people who say, I'm just looking for somebody I dig. And then to me, the, the further iteration of this would be like, look, I do, I do these kinds of readings from this perspective and here's my point of view on it. There's an ebook I wrote called Point of View Marketing. That's all about this. This is my take on those things. And this is who I am. This is my vibe. This is what I'm into. These are my hobbies. You know, so people sometimes will pick somebody who does those things just because like, oh, I relate to you. Here's my politics. Here's my, um, I don't know, my bookshelf. Here's the stuff I read. And sometimes it'll be just like, oh, yeah, you sing opera? Sweet. Okay, we're, you know, we're, we're, I'm going to work with you. So then the niching becomes a bit more about the even who you are. You know, it's good to say there's this six-petaled Venn diagram of, of niching, which is the who, what, where, when, how, why. And all those six, yeah. And so we're just talking about the who, but of course the other things do come into play. So that would be my thought. At this point, what's being sold is the boat, which is beautiful. Uh, and then it's going to be who's the captain of that boat. Let me meet the captain. I want to talk to her. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And thanks so much for letting us... Uh... Yes, Look at you. this, and um, I, I also want to just encourage anybody watching this, if you have any other thoughts for Anne, Please. go ahead and comment below. Uh, maybe you have some, yeah, some other ideas that are coming to you regards to how, how this makes sense to you, what questions do you have, or do you have other ideas that might make this even more appealing to you or to somebody you know. So go ahead and comment below. And um, I think it's okay that we spent extra time on this first one because there's yeah. some foundational kind of ideas that, that you know, I think, Tad, you needed to, to convey. So with that, let's go on to the next one, and then we'll, we'll continue on. Yeah, by the way, my commiseration to you all. This is a very difficult situation yeah. <laughs> to be in. It's very vulnerable. So bless you all. Thank you for um, being willing to do this, yeah. So, okay. Kim, great said, I help women who don't trust themselves move out of the sea of overwhelmed self-doubt and self-betrayal to a place of calm confidence and a resilience that aligns with their inner wisdom so they can enjoy a true well-being, great relationships, and effective leadership. Okay. Can I help women who don't trust themselves? Um, okay. So, okay, oh, there's so much to say here. What's interesting about this one is there's a, a real important distinction we want to make between their symptoms and our diagnosis is so profoundly important. The symptom is what they're experiencing. Our diagnosis is what we think they need. The symptom is my car keeps making this noise. The diagnosis is it's your carburetor. See what I'm saying? And so sometimes we, and, and the, by the way, the diagnosis, I'm really not dismissing it. You know, this whole book I wrote, Point of View Marketing, is all about that. That's the credibility piece, relevance, credibility, value, you know, so this is immense. This is actually most of marketing is making the case for your perspective and your diagnosis about what the hell's going on. But it does not belong here. The, in this statement, we're, all we're trying to do is, our, particularly who this person is, okay, 
so that I help women who don't trust themselves. So that my question is, and this isn't a uh, assertion one way or the other, but my question is, is it that they're aware they don't trust themselves and they're walking around saying, God, I keep second guessing myself. I keep not trusting myself. What is wrong with me? My gut was saying not to, <laughs> or are they walking around uh, not trusting themselves without any awareness of this? Yeah, it's how aware are they of the symptom? Because if they're aware of it, it's a symptom. If they are not aware of it, it's your diagnosis. So an, an, another example of this, somebody in my mentorship program, her website is a yarrowhealingarts.com, Y-A-R-R-O-W, yarrowhealingarts.com. But she helped people who have um, these mysterious symptoms, you know, like what the hell's going on? And their doctor says you're fine, there's nothing wrong. And they don't know what's going on. But what they suspect, so this is the awareness piece. What they're suspecting, that's another way to say it, is I've got these symptoms and I think this might be about some childhood emotional stuff. But I don't even know where to start looking at it. You see what I'm saying? So the awareness piece filters into, if you check out our headline, basically it says what I just said. Okay, so that's this open question. Do, are they aware they don't trust themselves or is that what you think is going on? And I'm curious, Kim, if you'd be willing to speak to that. Yeah, you know, I didn't have that, that specific phrase of don't trust themselves and then I thought, okay, if I look at my journey, mm -hmm. that's when I started wanting to do something. When I was doing exactly that, saying, why can't I just figure this out? Why, can't, why do I struggle to have a, make a decision? Why do I keep doubting myself? Why do I keep second guessing? So I would say it is the awareness of it that okay. so drove, then what drove I, me there. What I would say is, you know, listen to this recording again and write down what you just said, because it's very good. Okay. Um, this second guessing, you know, why can't I make a decision? So this is, this is very important. When you're doing copywriting, nickel words, not 50 cent words, not $5 words. Dear God, just simple. And we, we speak in the way that people speak. Um, so this is, it's, um, so if you're at a party, and I know you were probably given the constraint of words to, so it's, so, uh, you know, it's the. Uh, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we gave them the constraint of 280 characters. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's like trying to convey their, uh, their brilliant body of work into, into almost like, impossible. a sentence. Is, no, it's like when you tidy your room, uh, it gets messier before it gets cleaner. Because you got to get all the shit out and you got to pile it up. And if you stop in the middle, it's a disaster. So this is true for niching. We often have to like make <laughs> this big mess and then we whittle back down. It's just something that's just like so simple that you look at it at the end. And if anyone else hadn't gone through the process, they would just say, oh yeah, just that, that's great. You know, like that cost me years of crafting. So, okay. Um, so yeah, it, 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 I was at a party and I said, Kim, what are you doing? You said, well, you know, there are a lot of women there in this place where they're just thinking, why am I so indecisive? Why did I second guess myself all the time? I, you know, I had the red flags about dating this guy and then I dated him and the same thing happened again and I knew it. Like, why do I keep doing this? I would just say, oh, I know them. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're talking to a woman, you know, she would know if she's in that group or not and some women are not. Someone would hear that and say, huh, no, that's not me. Great, mission accomplished. The clarity's been achieved. Okay. So move out of the sea of overwhelmed self-doubt and self-betrayal. So yeah, so to me, there's a, bit, a little, it's a little wordy in a, I just think that could be said more colloquially. So for example, what I just said, you know, these women, they, they're they just, why can't I decide? Why am I always trusting other people over my own instincts and intuition? And re I regret it all the time. Um, in some ways, I think that says the overwhelmed self-doubt and self-betrayal. I mean, self-betrayal, it's interesting, self-doubt and self-betrayal, to me, land a bit diagnostic, a bit point of view, versus the experience, the visceral experience of, I did it to myself again. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that again. You know, in life, it's doing things, <laughs> doing stupid things is not so painful. Doing them again, it's just, ugh, oh, it's the worst. Okay, so then I helped them move out of this sea of overwhelm, uh, to a place of calm confidence and resilience that aligns with their inner wisdom so they can enjoy true role being great relationships and effective leadership. There's a lot in here, but this is, I think, part of the challenge. It, it becomes overwhelming to hear it. 
one loses their thread. And this is, oh, okay, this is a real important thing when we're doing this kind of articulation. Island A and Island B have to be in relationship with each other. It has to be very clear, mirror image. Island B is the opposite of Island A, yeah? You're tired, you got energy. You're broke, you have money. Whatever, the, the relationship just has to be clear. And so if people hear it and they can't see the thread between the two, it's just, huh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to say that's me. So, so in this, you, you name a bunch of things on Island A and a bunch of things on Island B, and the, just the connection is not, we've got, you know, overwhelm, self-doubt, uh, self-betrayal, but then on the other side, we've got calm confidence, but also inner wisdom, but also well-being, but also great relationships, also effective leadership. And so the, the clarity is lost. And clarity is so important. The confused mind says no. This is so important to understand. This is, here's something nobody has ever said in the history of the world. You're at a party, you articulate what you do, and they look at you and they say, huh, this, you know, I'm having the most interesting experience. We both speak the same language. I understood all of your words separately, and yet together, I have no idea what you just said. What's the most expensive package you sell? <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, the confused mind just says no. Okay, so, but if we go from this place of, look, they just don't, they keep second guessing themselves, they keep not trusting their instincts, then to me, island B would be they trust their instincts, or they trust their um, intuition, or they, uh, they're not second guessing themselves anymore. This is also important, by the way. The absence of island A is sometimes island B. If somebody's in a lot of pain, if you've ever been in real bad physical pain, you know for sure that when you took those pills and the pain went away, that was the greatest thing you'd ever experienced in your life. Just the absence of pain. If somebody came to you and said, would you like to feel more well-being? Just like, get out of my face, give me a pill. You just don't want the pain anymore, that's it. So it could just be like, you know, the, the absence of the indecision is great, but we can probably do better. Um, so yeah, so these women, they just the, um, so you see part of what I'm doing is you could say women who don't trust themselves, but then you give a bunch of things they might say, experiences they might have, the dating, the I took the wrong job. I, I just keep, you know, you give enough examples of it. And when somebody hears it, they say, got it. You, it's like you make a little quick mosaic and they can see the, the image, if you will. And then you say, and so what I help them do is not do that anymore. I help them. I help them, uh, there's so many different ways you could say, you know, trust themselves. I help them get so in touch with their intuition that they, they, uh, they rarely make decisions they regret anymore. They keep making decisions they feel really good about. You know, their life kind of lines up with the synchronicity because, you know, which could be another level of niching if that's what they believe. You know, because maybe also part of the problem is, this could be another layer is, you know, women don't trust themselves, they're second guessing themselves and they feel so out of flow with the world and they just think I'm missing out on stuff. If I could just trust myself, I think my life would be so much better and more beautiful. But I keep doing what other people think I should do. I keep following the crowd. I keep, so I help them, you know, follow their own kind of drummer. I help them even when it's scary. And these are, oh, this is a nice thing to do with niching. You could say, even if, yeah, even if it's scary, even if it's overwhelming, even if they're terrified, even when it makes no sense, even if it's illogical, even if, because uh, that's probably what they're thinking. Oh, I'd love to do this. Sure, I'd love to follow my intuition and, and make these you know, adventurous leaps in my life and leap into the unknown, but it's kind of scary. Yeah, even if it's scary, I help you I help them do that. Um, Great, and, and Tad, we should probably move on, but this is, yeah, I, Kim, I hope this is helpful. And uh, we have such limited time to, to do this, but I hope that it's given you some, some really good uh, tidbits to work with going yes, forward. Yes, thank you. Yeah, You're awesome. Okay, so next up, we've got, um, we've got, Ruth. yeah. Okay. I, work I with see these Suzanne's kids. already working on hers. <laughs> awesome. Good, good, so. good. All right. Um, 
Ruth. He said, I work with individuals who feel ready to complete the transformation of core wounds and patterns holding them back. I help them embrace themselves in full acceptance, align with their essence, stand tall and shine out, offering their gifts to the world. Beautiful. And by the way, all this work is beautiful. I mean, I'm like nitpicking on the wording, but I'm, thank you for doing it. Okay, so I work with individuals. Okay, so that part, um, so this is, woo, yeah, everybody. That's okay. um, so that's everybody who feel ready to complete the transformation of core wounds and patterns holding them back. Um, again, there is an opportunity to hone in on which types of wounds in particular. Uh, there's something called big circle and little circles. I would say this is a very good big circle and there's probably little circles within it. Big circles just generally who do you want to work with, but little circles, you can imagine a little Venn diagram of three overlapping circles. And so this is the type of thing where you could say, um, yeah, so big circle generally, who do I want to work with broadly, broad strokes, little circles, very particular target market, very specific issue, very specific problem that you're solving. Uh, the big circle you could say, and people might like, yeah, that it's a little fuzzier, but the little circle, or well, people know if they're in that or not. So when you say core wounds and patterns, you could tag that with such as bah, 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 and give three specific ones, the three that you're most excited to work with. Uh, because maybe not all the wounds and patterns are jazzy quite as much. So I help people with the transformation of core wounds and patterns, you know, such as da, 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 and holding them back. Uh, and by the way, I also wonder something about the moment they're in. Like, so it's holding them back. So what? What's the big deal? This is always a good question to ask around the problem. So what? So they have that situation. What's the big deal? What's the actual consequence to their life? I mean, they got a core wound, a pattern holding them back. But there's probably a real reason that matters to them. Again, there's a moment, there's a tipping point, a breaking point in their life, because they've been living with this for years. They might even been aware of it for years. So then what changed that they come to you? Something has happened in their, in their life that's made them say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna spend the time and the money there. And the more clearly we can articulate that moment, the more they will see themselves in it. Um, yeah. So it's holding them back, but from what? The rest yeah. of the phrase seems to shine light on that. Okay. So to stand let's, tall and shine out, offering their gifts to the world. So it's holding them back from that. Yeah. From full um, acceptance and from, yeah. So, okay. So help them embrace themselves with full acceptance. Again, this is very important. Is this what they're craving or is this what you think they need? Is this what they are craving? Like, are they following? And this is the important thing for everyone. To get, we get real honest with ourselves about this. Are they falling asleep at night saying those words to themselves? If only I could embrace myself with full acceptance. And maybe, I'm not saying they are or they aren't, but we often make the assumption that this thing that we want for them is the same thing that they want for themselves, that the way we're wording it is the way they word it. And this must be worded in the way they would word it. Because if we go for our version of it, they say, that's nice. Not that's me. So, um, yeah, are they, are, is, whoa, is this what they're saying? The, uh, yeah, embrace themselves with full acceptance, align with their essence. Are they falling asleep at night saying, God, if only I could align myself with my essence. Maybe. The, uh, to me, these are questionable, which is why I lift it up. I'm not sure that's what they, they would say in their language, in their words. Stand tall, shine out, same thing, offering their gifts to the world. Um, and the other thing is you've got four results there. There's four island Bs. Embrace themselves with full acceptance, align with their essence, stand tall and shine out, and offer their gifts to the world. Now, if you had to pick one of those, the one that you think they are craving the most, like if they were gonna vote, if you said, I got a magic wand, I can give you one of those four, which one do you wanna choose? Which one do you think they would choose, the one that they would be yearning for the most? Maybe stand tall and shine out. Okay, so this is the question, yeah? Because again, we're looking for that island AB symmetry. And 
Because then if it stand tall and shine out, then the island A would be related to that in some way. Like you feel like you're, you know, so you, you, somebody might say at a party, say, Ruth, what are you doing? And you say, well, you know how there's so many people who go through their lives kind of collapsed and so dim. And they, um, and their life is kind of, this the quiet life of quiet desperation for a lot of them. Well, I help them stand tall and shine out into the world. Yeah, it would be the, the very rough version of it. You see that the parallel that gets drawn versus if you said offering their gifts to the world, you might say something like this. I say, Ruth, what do you do? And you say, well, Ted, I, I suppose the world's in very rough shape, as you might have noticed. And I think a lot of people notice the rough shape the world's in, and they want to do something about it. But when they even have these ideas to do something, what, to start a nonprofit or just be more vocal or speak up when they see injustice, they can't. They're so scared and they, they, they have these gifts that they know they want to offer the world, but they're so scared. What would everyone think? They'd be judged, they'd you know, be kicked out of belonging and, and out of the community or laughed at. And so they don't. And so I help them figure a way to offer their gifts to the world, even if it's real scary. Something like that. No, so that's, it's really not my niche. My niche is of people who have done a lot of work on themselves. Mm -hmm. And yet, they haven't really launched out. So, okay, what you just said, that's clearer than what you just wrote. That's beautiful. That's good. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, people that have been in personal growth work for a while, and they've read all the books, they've done all these workshops, and yet there's something that's stopping them from launching out. And the thing I would deepen the exploration of, an articulation of, is the launching out. What does that mean? Launching into what? What are they craving to? Is there a theme that you see or patterns that you see of the way that they want to launch out into the world? Because then that's when you're at a party and you talk to somebody about that, they hear this, they say, oh, wow. Yeah, that's me. I, oh my God, that was my mother. You know, or that's a, I have a friend like this. Uh, and th that little bit about they've already done all this personal growth work. And sometimes you can, you can uh, refine that by saying like such as, ba, 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 and you give the most common ones you've heard. They do the yoga, they've done the meditation, they've done the, you know, breath work, whatever the most common ones that you would see. Because somebody hears it and is like, oh, is this confronting? That's exactly me that she just named. I've done all those things, and yet there's something holding them back. And the better you can articulate that holding back and what it is they're trying to launch towards, then that becomes the island B, island A and B. It's like, hey, are you wanting to launch out in this kind of way that you can't? Even though you've done all this work, I'm your go. And then this is where the point of view comes in. Because then people say, oh, that's me. Yeah, wh why is that? Why do we not launch out into the world? Well, here's what I think is really going on. See what I'm saying? Then that's very compelling. Yeah. Thank you for the work that you're doing, Ruth. It's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thank awesome. you for yours, too. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, do we have time for one more? Okay. And then, of course, we, we have another call set up, uh, which we'll, we'll have more time for. But um, how about you, Tad? What, what, what's, what do you think? I'm all good. Okay. Let's do, uh, well, let's, let's do Suzanne's. Um, okay. Suzanne, let me go ahead and just, I'm going to just uh, check mark this so that yeah, we're, we're good. All right. So, and then uh, thank you, Denise and Darcy, for your patience. We're going to get to you next week. Um, this gives you more chance to, to work on yours. So uh, Suzanne, go for it. Okay, Tad, here we go. So you know how uh, so many women struggle with their weight and how they cycle through patterns of dieting and overeating. I help women like this who no longer want the relationship with food to be the primary way they relate to life. Okay, beautiful. Well, first of all, what's, here's the strengths and weaknesses of this as I see it. On the strong side, I know if I'm in that group or not. It is very clear I'm not in that group. I'm not a woman. I don't struggle with my weight. So I just know that's not me. But if you were a woman who struggled with you, would just know automatically. So this is a huge check mark here. This is very clear. <clears throat> very clear 
type of person, a very clear situation, very clear scenario. Because this is what we're trying to do in these statements, as brief and as pithy as they are, we're trying to tell a story yeah, of a particular person in a particular situation that conjures this whole kind of narrative to mind of, oh, I know that whole story, yeah, yeah. Trying to do it with as few words as possible, not easy. Um, yeah. Okay. And how they cycle through patterns of dying or eating. Well, yeah, that's very clear too. You're telling the story of these women. And so I, I would, if I was that woman, I would say, God, I totally do that. So here's part of the challenge with this is um, there's so many boats down in the harbor of uh, weight loss. You know what I'm saying? That's like the most yeah. crowded harbor on the island. You go to the harbor of like polyamory and weird dating stuff. There's a few boats, like the, the freaky Burning Man boats. There's a few of them, and it's cool. But it's, and, you know, and if you go to the, uh, I don't know, growing local food, there's more boats. It's growing, but there's, like, not as many. But when you go to the weight loss boat, ah, that harbor, shit. <laughs> like they can't fit all the boats in. And so this is part of the challenge. It becomes, oh, you're another one of those boats. And it's yeah. such a wash, like how the hell do I differentiate? Um, and so, um, could you, would you tell me very briefly what your kind of philosophy point of view is around this weight loss business? So based on what you were just saying with the previous person about like, what's the breaking point? Like, where do they come to you? It's that they're done. They're done with diets. They're done with shakes. They're done with weigh-ins. They'd rather be fat forever than keep living like this. But there must be a way that they can improve themselves. Like, this is where I think I'm going into diagnosis rather than them. This is where okay. I get my. Let me just pause yeah, for so Let me just pause. time for one second. Okay, yep. here's the specific question Why do you think they're overweight? Because I don't believe deep down that they can stick to anything forever. Okay. And do you think they're searching for an answer? So they don't believe they can stick to anything forever. And do you think that they're they also believe that they're gonna have to stick to something that's kind of misery making? Is yeah, that like kale think? or smoothies or crossfit. <laughs> okay, this is good. I hope you all hear that this is gold, what she just said. Kale, smoothies, and crossfit. This is another way, a little tag you can add to the target market thing. By the way, if you go to my YouTube channel. I've got a bunch of these video playlists uh, on target markets and lots of things there, but one of them is the without um, frame, I would call it. So it could be like, do you want to, um, do you want to lose weight without a life that's only kale and smoothies and CrossFit? And I can see people saying like, yeah, that's me. Totally. I, I want to do that. Yeah. It's under the playlists, right? There's, um, uh, let's see, there's one, Niching exercises to figure it out, number 19. Or is, or is 19 videos there on the left-hand side? In the middle, yeah. So there's a bunch of things there. That can yeah, be very and I'm going to be sure to put the link to this playlist Great. in the notes of the video. So those of you who are watching this, please go ahead and just look below and find the link to this. Yeah. This isn't as robust as the home study, but some, you know, some help. Anyways. Yeah. But so this, this without frame of like, what is it that they want to be able to do without like, hey, uh, do you know how some people struggle with uh, depression? Well, I help them recover from depression without medications would be an example of that, the classic. Um, so they, so it's interesting. In some ways, I think you, you've kind of nailed it in the first two sentences, but there is a more specific subset of these people. It's not just that the initial things they're struggling with their weight. That's filter number one. So if they're not, they're gone. But if they are, they drop through to the second one. And they're in this pat cycle of dieting and overeating. Okay, now that's true. They dropped down to the next one. If not, they're gone. But what we're starting to articulate is this other uh, level of their, uh, what you just said, where it's, it's the, the reason they're, they're starting to realize. So this is another one of those awareness things. They're starting to realize or suspect, like, the reason I can't lose weight is I've never seen a plan that makes sense to me. It's either just eating... Yeah, kale and smoothies for the rest of my life, I'm doing CrossFit, or it's, you know, and this can be very helpful. You could list like, what are the major options they see for weight loss? It's either this, 
supports this or it's this. These are the three big things you see out there. And they look at all of those and they think, I can't do these. I know, I've tried it and I've never been able to stay on the horse long enough. So it can't be one of those. So if you say, you know, a lot of women struggle with their weight and they're the cycle of dieting and overeating because the, they look at the options for weight loss and it all seems to fit into one of these three categories, this, this, or this. And none of those make sense to them anymore, but they don't know what else to do. So I help them figure a way to lose the weight, keep the weight off uh, without doing any of those things. Could be an example. Because when you say, I help women like this who no longer want their relationship to food to be the primary way they relate to life. Again, I just don't know if that's, are they going to sleep going like, I'm so tired of relating to my life only through food, maybe. But I just yeah, think no, that, the second part of it I struggled with, but that's, I, I, thank you, that helps heaps. I have to watch that bit back, articulating yeah. that heaps better. All right, whenever you're struggling with Island B, look back to Island A. If you're struggling with Island A, look to Island B, because there should be a symmetry, like a very precise, profound, one side or the other. You know, again, you're, you're lonely, you're in a relationship. It's a very clear relationship between those two things. And if it gets too wordy and there's too many Island A's and too many Island B's, the result will be confusion. And the result of that is they will say no. Mm. Um, so this is, you're looking for a very specific moment they're in, in their weight loss journey. And the more that can be articulated, the better. You know, like, and I, I would say, what a, a question would be, what are they beginning to suspect might be true about weight loss? And they can't find anyone to verify it. For like that, I have these mysterious symptoms. Maybe it's about my childhood. I think it might be about some childhood trauma stuff. Huh, I don't know even how to look at that. Um, you know how you said something about a metaphor earlier with somebody else? Because a metaphor I use with my clients that all of them like, yes. But I don't know if that goes into my statement. It's like, the, it's a log. It's, the metaphor is a log. So overeating is a log that helps them. So, so for whatever reason, they're in a raging river. They grab onto this log and it helps them float. But then they don't need the log anymore. And all their friends are on the shore saying, let go of the log, come over here. But they don't trust themselves to let go of that. So I don't say either log or no log. What about if you can tread water next to it? What about if you can swim around it? And enough times that you know that you can let go. So it's not like it doesn't have to be instant. I'm probably not explaining it very well. But I don't know how to put that in a niche statement. No, it's not totally clear, but there's, I, I, I can smell it. There's the scent of, of uh, there's a thread there to follow. That could be very good because this is the type of thing. So what do you do? You know, a lot of people with weight loss, it's like there are these three major approaches and they're just they're drowning in their concern about weight loss and they hold on to it. But uh, there's a point, it's just it doesn't make sense to hold on to it anymore. And they've got to let it go, but it's scary because if I let go of that, well, then I'm just condemning myself to be overweight for the rest of my life. I'm just mm. condemned to be unhealthy, and I don't want that either. Oh, this is a really good. Maybe we'll end with this. This is one of my favorite ways to articulate target markets is very often island A is actually people feeling torn between two things. You know, island A is should I stay or should I go in a relationship? I can't decide. And that tear is very difficult. Or it could be the tear of, I either try to do these dietary things that feel awful and that I know I can't sustain and I'll feel full, full of shame or I give up. These are my two options. And they feel trapped, pulled between these things. And no matter which way they go, it's the rock and the hard place. They're doomed. And so they don't, and so then, it, you know, the result could be, you know, a lot of people feel torn. I help them figure out a way to lose their weight sustainably in an enjoyable way that isn't either of those two. Mm, that's my people. I love it. There you go. Awesome. This is great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tad. Um, I want to just end by well, thanking you for you know take, really taking your time and care for all this. Thanks to everybody who's here, like being willing to have your statements, you know, kind of um, analyzed in such a way. Um, and lastly, I just want to, a uh, couple things. One is those of you who are watching this later, um, this, the, 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 there will be a copy of this document along with the links to each person 
So you'll be able to just look, look below the video and you'll be able to kind of access this document again and check out each person um, click on, you know, clicking on the link to their name will take, take you to their website. And the last thing is I want to just show Tad's um, course. So Tad's website for this course is called nichingspiral.com. And if you go there, nichingspiral.com, you go to home study course and you will see that it is, you know, well described. Um, it's a 90 day program. So like each day, Tad, there's like a little bit of video each day, right? Yeah, cool. there's a video. And I would say basically there are uh, four chunks to it. There's four main areas. The first part is just figuring out like a niching one-on-one because most people really don't understand niching and it's the confusion around niching that, um, screws everything up, you know, it's because you, how can you, you don't have a good map for it. So that's number one. Number two is this ideal client, the big circle. And what comes out of that, an ideal client page for your website or a, um, or your homepage, a lot of the content for that. So that when people land on your website, there's an immediate, I know if I'm this or not, there's no confusion. Third, target markets, really honing in on what are the specific, um, issues you could help people with because the big circle, the ideal client, there's only ever one of those, but you could have three little circles. And so you'll be guided on how to relate to those. And then fourth is the, uh, how do you do little niche experiments and tests? So you don't have to change your whole website overnight, which is madness, but how do you do small little beta tests, pilot tests, minimum viable offer, this type of thing. Uh, so you can see and get some feedback and be in conversation with the marketplace, but some very specific thoughts on how to do that and lots of examples and tons, by the way, in this home state, there's just so many examples. There's a whole niching vault full of um, all sorts of uh, niching case studies from the contests we've done over the years. Tons of examples. Of course, there's a little Facebook group. Um, yeah. you know, where and, you can and each person who joins will get your personal analysis, critique, suggestions about their niching statement, right? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, so kind of similar to what we've been doing today with, with each person, they'll, they'll get that in the group. The Facebook community, the private group will keep going so that they can continue to ask questions, kind of bring updates about their, uh, their niche to the group for feedback, et cetera. Um, and the, the whole thing with the 90 day program, everything is, you know, with access to the Facebook group, uh, perpetual access, I guess, um, yeah. the whole thing is only $300 us as of this recording. So, um, I recommend people check it out. And as I said, you know, if you, if you buy it through me, so in other words, buy the program and then tell me that you, you found out about it through, um, through me. I will give you another $150 of value for my future courses. So any courses that you haven't yet bought from me, you get $150 of credit to my courses. So it's kind of like, you know, spending 300 and getting $450 of value. Um, so with that, thank you so much, Tad, for what you do. Is there anything else you want to say before we, before we end the call? No, that's it. I'm grateful for you. Just immense blessings on all of you and all of your work and, May, may it only grow clear, and as it grows clear, it becomes a kind of a beacon that draws all these good people towards you, you know, and may that happen soon and quickly, and all the people who would mean trouble for you uh, never darken your doorway, and just a living room full of ideal clients for the rest of your days. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much, Tad. Um, the website, is, again, it's niching, spiral, N-I-C-H-I-N-G, spiral.com. Uh, you'll find all the links below and um, there is another video of Tad doing this with a few other uh, clients so you might want to check that out of course there's a link to Tad's playlist anyway uh, check out the links and I hope you'll I hope I'll see you in the course because I'm also in that Facebook group all right everyone thank you so much and we'll see you later